Hello, welcome to uh, the first day of the new chapter in chapter 2. Today we're going to learn about angles of rotation. Now in the past we've learned about angles between 0 and 90 mostly and a little bit of 0 between, between 0 and 180. Today we're going to go and expand that. Now an angle is in standard position. Every once in a while I'll say an angle is in standard position. And when I, what I mean by that is if we draw it on the axis, its vertex is going to be on the origin. So it's going to, the vertex is going to be on the origin. Its initial side is along the positive horizontal axis. So positive horizontal axis will be out here. Then it is measured by rotating the initial side, this side, to a terminal side in a counterclockwise direction if it's positive. So if I moved it here, that would be, say, you know, 30, 40 degrees. And that would be 90, about 135, 180. And it keeps going around and around, 270, 315, and so on, as we go around the circle. So this is called the initial side. And this is called the terminal side. Now here's some examples. If it's positive, it's going to be going up, so say that's about 63 degrees. A negative angle would be rotating not uh, counterclockwise, but now clockwise, so that's negative 120 degrees. 145 is just going past 90. I could say the angle 660 by going around once and then coming back. Uh, so this would be the same direction as, say, 300 because 360 minus 660 is 300. Now you don't have to draw this uh, spiral going around and around because sometimes if we say like 1800 you don't want uh, a mess of circles. We just want to know what direction 660 is going to go in. Now uh, the last, those last two angles are what we call coterminal angles. They're angles whose measures differ by a multiple of 360 degrees. So one example is 210 if I add 360 to that, it will be 570. Now if I subtract 360 from 210, I get negative 150. All three of these are coterminal, and coterminal angles are always going off in the same direction. Now what angle, which angle measure is coterminal with an angle in standard position with a degree measure of 40, but lies between 360 and 720? Pause the video, go through this problem. All right, 40 degrees is going to be somewhere up here. Then if this is 40, I can add 360 to it to get to 400. And since 400 degrees, that's supposed to be a degree, not a 4,000. 400 degrees is between 360 and 720, so this is the answer that I'm looking for. Find the angle between 0 and 360 that's coterminal with 575. Well, what we can do is take 575, that's a 5, minus 360, and uh, we'll have 215. So if I drew this out, 215 is going to be somewhere over here, and so is 575. Now a reference angle. Reference angles are extremely important for this chapter on through the rest of the semester. Uh, a reference angle is a positive, acute angle between the horizontal axis and the terminal side. Seems easy. What, so if I'm over here, if, if this is my angle, I want a positive, acute angle. So acute means it has to be uh, less than 90 between the horizontal axis, so this is horizontal, and this terminal side. So my acute angle, my reference angle, is going to be that angle right there, because it's going to be positive, it's going to be acute, and it's going to be between these two sides. Now, drawing a term, uh, finding the reference angle, we draw the terminal side of the angle, then we draw a triangle down to the x-axis, just like I just did, and then uh, the reference angle is the angle between the x-axis and the terminal side. So here's a couple examples, 45 degrees, the reference angle is 45 degrees. 
Over here at 110 degrees, the reference angle, if I drop it straight down, is going to be 110 minus uh, 180, so that's 70 degrees. Over here, 210, we draw it up to the horizontal axis, remember, every time. And so that would be 30 degrees because 210, this is 180. The difference there is 30. So that reference angle is 30. And over here at 315, go up to the horizontal axis. That's going to be 45. All right. Now, remember, all, horizontal, all, all of the triangles that you're going to create have to go down to the x-axis. So in a way, it kind of makes a bow tie. Uh, if, it doesn't, if your triangle isn't part of the bow tie, then you might have made a mistake. Uh, some people thought that this looked like a butterfly in the past. I think it looks more like a bow tie. Some people say it looks like some Star Wars jet fighter. Uh, whatever helps you remember it, I'm fine with you calling it whatever. Um, all right, so you guys try this one. Pause the video. See what you come up with. All right, 130 degrees. This is 180. This is 90, so it's somewhere in here. And if this is 130, our reference angle has to be 50. Find the reference angle for 330. Pause the video again. 330 is over here. So if this is 330, if we're going up to the x-axis, that means that that angle, reference angle, has to be 30. 200 degrees. It's going to be a little past 180. And we'll call this angle 20 degrees. It's just barely past 180. So, because uh, there's 20 de degrees between 180 and 200. Negative 23 degrees. We drop it down. That angle is going to be 23 degrees. So that's just the reference angle. Negative 330. Uh, so this is negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 330 is over here. So that means that there will be 30 degrees uh, as a reference angle. All right, how about 1130? So uh, if I start this out, if I go around once, that's 360. Go around again, that's 720. Go around again, that's 1080. So 1080, we can take uh, 1130 and 1080 and subtract them. And we'll have 50 degrees. So really, we're just going up 50 degrees. So that's my reference angle. Now some people remember, some people who play a lot of video games remember this from um, skateboarding games. Uh, so they're able to go 360, 720, 1080 pretty quick. All right, so 1675. So uh, we know 1080 is three times around. Uh, if we go four times around, that's going to be 360 plus 1080, which is 1440. Subtract that out. We have 235. Now, some people are tempted to put 235 as the, their answer for this, but that's not correct because the reference angle uh, isn't the coterminal angle. So 180 is there, 270 is there, in between here is 235. So if this is 180, the angle in here is going to be 235 minus 180, which is going to be 20 plus 35, which is 55. So 
my reference angle is 55 degrees. All right, sine and cosine in the coordinate plane. Uh, if I would make a right triangle out of this, I could go anywhere on the circle, and the cosine of my angle theta here would be this x value over the radius of my circle. I could even go here, and if this angle right here is theta, still cosine is my x value over r. The sine is going to be my y value over r, regardless of where you're at on the circle. So draw a 147 degree angle in standard position and find the reference angle. Pause the video and see if you can do this. 147 is somewhere over here. So this is 180. My reference angle is this angle here. So if I take 180 minus 147, that angle is 33 degrees. So my reference angle is 33 degrees. Now let's type into our calculator uh, and find these values. All right, so if I type these values into my calculator, the cosine, or I'll drag that here. If I hit enter one more time, now I have my sine of 33. So cosine of 147 is negative 0.8387. The cosine of 33 is 0.8387. Sine of 147 is 0.5446, and the sine of 33 is 0.5446. Notice the relationship. It's both the numbers. Cosine is negative, but sine is positive at 147. But uh, the number after the positive or negative is the same. All right, let's do this for 195 degrees. So pause the video, draw a 195 degree angle, and find its reference angle. All right, 195 is down here. I think I went a little far because this is a little bigger than 15 degrees, but that's all I need for right now. But uh, So that's 15 degrees. Now take a second, pause the video, and find these four answers and see how they, those compare. All right, so I plug those in. These are my values. Notice that the numbers are the same. But now, for the 195, uh, they are both negative for cosine and sine. Um, but the numbers after the positive and negative are the same on the reference angle as they are with the angle. It's not the reference angle. So try this for 305. All right, I drew this out. 305 is here. 360 is here. So if I subtract them, that's going to be 55 degrees. So now I want you to find cosine of 305, sine of 305, cosine of 55, and sine of 55, and compare them. All right, if we look at these four values, now cosine is positive and sine is negative of the values of the reference angles. So now let's, let's just kind of page back and let's look at what we found. Uh, from here, 147, cosine was negative, but uh, sine was positive. At 195, they're both negative of the reference angles. And then at 305, sine is negative and cosine is positive of the reference angles. So what it has to do with is which quadrant they're in. And it'll make sense when we draw our triangles. In this quadrant, my opposite side, my adjacent, and my hypotenuse are all positive values. So sine and cosine are both positive in quadrant one. Now if I have my, this in quadrant two, 
remember this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. All right, in quadrant two, my opposite over hypotenuse, this is a positive number over hypotenuse is always positive, so the sign is going to be positive. But here I have a negative adjacent. This value here is moving to the left, so that's negative. So my cosine is going to be a negative value. When I draw this down here, my opposite is now a negative value. My adjacent is a negative, but my hypotenuse, like I said before, is always positive. So negative over negative, negative over negative. My sine is negative. My cosine is negative. So everything between 270, all my cosines and sines between 270 and 360 are going to be negative. Now, the second mistake of the lesson, between 180 and 270. All right, because this is 90, 180, 270. All right, here we go. Hopefully I don't make any more mistakes. Now, if we have the opposite over hypotenuse here, see how this opposite is a negative value? So my sine will be negative, but my cosine, that's a positive x value. So it would be positive over positive, which will be positive. Now, I saw another mistake. That cosine should have been positive because up here they're both positive. In here, just cosine is negative, sine is positive. Down here, sine and cosine are both negative. And in quadrant four, sine is negative, but cosine is positive. All right. Now, the terminal side of an angle contains the point 8, negative 5. Now, before we read anything more about this question, let's draw this out. I have my uh, axis. And my terminal side is 8, so I can move to the right 8, and down 5. This right here is what we call our terminal side. That point is 8, negative 5. So we draw a sketch, find the hypotenuse. Uh, so this is 8 to the right. That's 5 down. We can write negative 5 because we're going down. So to find that, 8 squared plus 5 squared is equal to c squared, or 64 plus 25. That's uh, 89. So the square root of 89 is that value. So now let's use this definition of sine and cosine to find uh, the sine of theta or the cosine of theta. All right, so now we want to find the sine and the cosine. So the sine of theta is going to be the opposite side, which is negative 5, over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 89. Now remember, we can't leave a square root in the denominator, so we need to rationalize this by multiplying by the square root of 89 over the square root of 89. So this will be negative 5 root 89 all over 89. Now the cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side, which is 8, over the hypotenuse, which is square root of 89. And again, we can't leave it uh, square root in the denominator, so we rationalize it. And so we'll have 8 root 89 over 89. Notice that we are in quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, we have our sine value being negative and our cosine value being positive, just like we said would happen sine negative, cosine positive. All right, try this one, pause the video, and work. try this one on your own. All right, so hopefully you're done with the problem. We'll go three to the left and seven up. Now, if that's our angle here, theta, now, we want to find the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. Well, this is negative 3, 7. The hypotenuse would be 3 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared, or 9 plus 49, which is 58. Now we take the square root of 58. 
Now we have to think, square root of 58, can we simplify that any further? Uh, 58, if I divide 58 by 2, that's going to be um, 29, right? And 29 is a prime number, so we're good. Square root of 58, we can write like that. So the sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So now we multiply by root 58 over root 58. All right. All right, so for each of these, we have 7 root 58 over 58 and negative 3 root 58 over 58.